Welcome back to the channel, guys. So, Warner Brothers just released trailer number three for The Batman, titled The Bat and the Cat. I'm going to take a look at it and give my thoughts. Let's get into it. Bruce Wayne. Why is he writing to you? You came. I've been trying to reach you. Well, aside from Warner Brothers hiring Dr. Seuss to title the new Batman trailer, I'm thoroughly impressed with how things are shaping up. Robert Pattinson truly has some really big shoes to fill. From Michael Keaton, Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, and Kevin Conroy. And you might be asking yourself, why is Kevin Conroy on the list? It's simple. Because he's the GOAT. The same reason Mark Hamill would be on the list for the best portrayals of the Joker. Because he's the GOAT. <laughs> and yes, yes, I know I'm missing a few names, but we generally don't allow panhandling around here anymore. So those two guys had to move on. And we have Zoe Kravitz playing Catwoman. I'm interested to see how her role is going to turn out for her. She's also coming off the heels of Anne Hathaway as Catwoman, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, and Eartha Kitt, you know, the OG Catwoman from the Adam West Batman days. But I think she's going to do a good job. She's a pretty good actress. And I feel like from what I've seen from the trailers, their relationship is going to be much more in-depth than what we got from Christopher Nolan's uh, The Dark Knight Rises. And I think they're pushing for... Something, if Matt Reeves does more Batman movies like this, she's going to be a staple in the uh, franchise going forward. And I'm looking forward to see how this turns out for her. If we don't stand up, no one will. You got a lot of cats. Never think about strays. The bat and the cat. Matt Reeves has continued to say, we have not seen a Batman like this before. And judging by the trailers, He's definitely staying true to his word. The noir vibe that he's going for is felt heavily in every single trailer that we've gotten so far. They're dark, they're brutal, and they're gritty, and I absolutely love them. This is shaping up to be the version of Batman that is the closest to the version from the Detective Comics run that we've gotten in the past, as well as being the most grounded version that we've gotten, even more so than the Nolan films. No gadgets, no Bat family, and absolutely no guns. And yes, we're looking at you, Zack Snyder. I could have handled these C-listers on my own. Dressing like a bat doesn't make you a hero. It just makes you a target. And using a gun makes you just like them. While on the subject of Zack Snyder, the one thing Matt Reeves needs to get right is the combat. Batman is an absolute badass when it comes to combat. And Zack Snyder nailed it. That warehouse scene from Batman vs. Superman, absolutely brilliant. And from what I've seen in the trailers, Matt Reeves is on the right track with the combat and the brutality that Batman has to offer up to some of these cannon fodder thugs. The hell are you supposed to be? Just an absolute badass. I think Robert Pattinson will do an amazing job as Batman. But what's holding him back, it's no fault of his own. It's more so that people can't let go of the fact that he played Edward Cullen in the Twilight Saga. That's also something he's been trying to distance himself from as well by taking on some real serious roles during and after the Twilight Saga. Water for Elephants has him taking on one of his first serious roles. It's a film that was set in the 1930s where he plays Jacob, a former veterinarian student who takes a job at a traveling circus and falls in love with the ringmaster's wife. Love, loss, and betrayal. These are key elements that make for good cinema. And also, The Lighthouse is another film that really shows off his acting talent and range. Alongside Willem Dafoe, who's also a phenomenal actor himself. 
Who would have thought the Green Goblin and Batman star in an 1890s film where they're both the booze out of their mind and guarding the lighthouse? As Jamie Foxx would say, And at one point, I also was a skeptic when it came to casting actors within these superhero roles. And the one that comes to mind is when they cast Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. I had my pitchfork and torch ready to go. Any questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, I got a question there. Uh, when do we get to light our torches? When it gets dark. Ah, I see. Oh, hey, I got another question there. Suppose, uh, hypothetically, you know, a guy had uh, already lit his torch. I mean, uh, uh, it'd be cool if he, if he could just keep it lit, huh? <laughs> yes. Oh, excellent. Excellent. This was around the time where he had tons of legal troubles, as well as he was battling his own personal issues. I was definitely on the WTF train. And once I settled down and decided to give him a chance, long story short, I can't picture Tony Stark being played by anyone else other than Robert Downey Jr. The, the saying is never judge a book by its cover. And this is definitely evident in this casting. Let's sit back and trust in Matt Reeves' vision. He's also the same director who gave us one of the best movie trilogies of all times, if not the best movie trilogy of all times in Planet of the Apes. So I say, give Matt Reeves and give Robert Pattinson a shot, and let's see what they do. That's it for my thoughts on the trailer, guys. I really think Matt Reeves is going to do a good job at bringing his vision to life, and Robert Pattinson is going to do an absolutely great job as Batman. And he's going to be up there with your Christian Bale, your Ben Affleck, and your OG Michael Keaton. But those are my thoughts. This is it. If you like what you saw here, like, comment, subscribe. And if you really loved it, hit that notification bell. And if you got anything to add, negative or positive, you know, leave it in the comment section below. But on to the next one. Be safe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.